Hello and welcome to today's Living Life. Uh, growing up, I had many favorite movies, but amongst them is one that I don't necessarily, you know, share too publicly. Uh, and it's a movie that I really enjoyed, but uh, it's not a movie that when other, especially guys, hear about, they don't quite think this is such a manly movie to watch. Uh, it's a movie called A Walk to Remember. And it's based off a romantic uh, book, but in it, it shows the story of a man, of a boy actually, who in college, he go, in high school, he goes through this big transition. And he encounters this unusual girl who's, uh, who's very gentle, who's very kind. And we find out that her father is a pastor and it's her faith that helps to you know, promote this gentle way of life. And the story is about this boy who, through this encounter with this girl, he's transformed. He, uh, his life takes a complete shift around and he suddenly wants to become a better, uh, better, better person. And in today's passage, as we look at it, we'll begin to see in some areas where um, people respond to a good person. They respond to the best person, Jesus. And some of them come away transformed, but other people, perhaps they struggle with it. And just like what happens in the movie, some people turn away, but some people draw even closer. And we'll see in today's passage, just a small hint of just the depth of what happens when people encounter Jesus. So let's dig into today's passage. Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, a new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. Welcome back to Living Life. Uh, as you see in this passage, it begins with Jesus' very uh, seemingly innocent invitation. He just says, follow me. And we see uh, in today's passage, we see Levi himself who comes, who responds. Levi, the tax collector, responds and he follows Jesus. He leaves behind uh, everything in his life. And it seems so simple when we read about it. But when we think about it practically, what he left behind is not a job he can simply return back to. Uh, it's, not a store, it's not a job working at a local convenience store where there's always a need. Uh, being a tax collector, it wasn't a very reputable job, but you can make a lot of income. You could take a lot of bribes and you can also charge extra. And you're not working for your local government. You're working for the greater empire, the Roman Empire. So being a tax collector, he put himself at odds with his own people. But leaving his tax collector position, he puts himself at odds with his old way of life. So the seemingly innocent follow me and the response of Levi to get up, to leave everything behind and to follow Jesus is already a very radical transformation. And perhaps that was a little bit of what it may have looked like in your life when you experience the mercy and the love of Jesus in your life. Maybe for you, it was that simple 
as uh, Levi seems to have placed it, is he just left everything, he stood up and he followed Jesus. But for, uh, for the rest of us, perhaps we might struggle a little bit more with that reality. When we experience the love of Jesus, perhaps it's harder for us, we want to say, but there's, there's something in my life that I'm, I'm not done with yet, Lord. May, can you give me some more time? And uh, in, in, in this way, perhaps even the response of Levi is an encouragement and a challenge to us that, you know, he leaves behind his old way of life and he leaves it behind with no regrets and he follows his Jesus until his death. So it begins very simply, follow me. The passage continues on though and it comes up with several different challenges. But uh, one thing that I'm constantly amazed by is um, the very simple notion that when people encounter Jesus, they come out changed, they come out transformed. Um, and, you know, Jesus gives this metaphor into this passage. He talks about how, you know, as a physician goes to the sick, he came to those who were sinners, those who were needy. And uh, we too easily, I think, step past this quote. Because if we think about it, uh, if, we're, if we have a cold, and if we spend time with other people and we touch them, or if we accidentally cough or sneeze on them, they may also receive that same cold we have. Our uncleanliness, our sickness, transfers to other people. And similarly, if we hang out with sick people, uh, it's perhaps inevitable that we ourselves would also get sick. What's so amazing is Jesus spends time with sinners. He spends time with the sick, the outcasts of society. He even touches lepers, which was completely taboo, and uh, you'll be considered very unclean. But Jesus interacts with the sick, he touches the lonely, he touches the oppressed, and what happens is those people are transformed. Their sickness leaves them. Their uncleanliness and their condition that would cause them to be abandoned, to be restricted from participating in the community life, or even in the faith and temple religious life, all of those become, they just disappear because they encounter the Holy One. So when we see Jesus interacting with sinners and tax collectors, he comes as a doctor to them. He comes as a holy one to make them holy. He comes as one to make them clean. And it's so countercultural that the world just cannot understand it. The world cannot grasp that reality. So the teachers of the time, at the, they say, uh, they talk about Jesus and say, why is he sitting with sinners and tax collectors? These pariahs, these people who are considered unclean, these people who uh, their lifestyle doesn't reflect a desire to know Jesus or know God more. But why does Jesus spend time with them? They're not able to understand it. Because for them, if you invite people to dinner or to a meal for a table fellowship, that's a supremely intimate action. It's what you would only do with your closest friends. And yet Jesus goes to these people who are uh, neglected and abandoned in society and he says, come and be with me. Then he further goes and encounters uh, uh, the, the people who were talking to Jesus' disciples about how they were not fasting. And it says, John's disciples fast, the Pharisees fast. Why do your disciples not fast? You see, all the people who seem so holy and so faithful in the eyes of the world, they're all fasting. Why are you not? And Jesus responds, um, pretty much he says, this is a wedding season because I am with them. And he uses his bridegroom and bride te uh, terminology. But if we look in the Old Testament, that terminology is uniquely seemingly used of God and his people. So what is Jesus saying about himself? He's saying, I am God. I am the son of God. And these people are my people. Why? Because I have created them. I have created them in my image and I love them and I want to see them made whole. Christianity, we oftentimes think of it as, you know, just trying to live a better life. You know, uh, we want to be a better me. In the introduction, I talked about a walk to remember. The man wants to become a better man through encountering this girl. But Christianity is not becoming a better you. It's becoming a new you. And that's what today's section about the garments and old wine, wineskin, is all talking about how when the new has come, the old needs to be thrown away. 
when Jesus comes, we throw away our old way of life and we cling to Him, and He makes us new. So let's reflect a little bit on today's passage. In today's passage, we see a very amazing interaction with Jesus and people. And uh, I think we so often just read and be like, that's nice. But if we stop and we reflect on it, like we're doing in today's living life, we begin to see how amazing it is that Jesus spends time with the outcasts of society. And perhaps we ourselves may have experienced that experience when we felt like outcasts in the world. For me, when I came to faith, I felt very separated from this world. I felt very lost and alone. But when I met the Lord Jesus, I felt like these sinners and tax collectors who were invited into this celebrity's life, into his table, into his house. And I was invited to be with him. And uh, the transformation that happens to just being loved by my Savior, being loved by Jesus, it's life transforming. And uh, it talks about how when the old, when the new comes, the old must be thrown out. Uh, there's a verse that I want to leave us on today, and it's the Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen, and it says, "If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away; behold, the new has come." If we are in Christ Jesus, if we call Him our Lord and our Savior, we do not have to be bound by the old way of life. We don't have to be bound by the attempt and the desire to be a better me, but we are a new person. We are a new, beloved, holy person because of Jesus. So I encourage you today as you walk out, uh, walk out your day, walk out your journey, that you will remember that you are loved and you are precious, not because of the work that you do to try to earn His love, but simply because Jesus calls you His own. So let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you for your word today. We thank you for the preciousness and the stories that is in it that tells us of how you interacted with the lost and the lonely. Father, may we experience again your intimate hand and your touch on our lives. So we thank you, Jesus, for today. In your name we pray. Amen.